So good morning, everybody. I hope everybody is well and you're welcome. I know we have more to join, so we'll just wait up for more people to join. So you can use the chat box if you wish, or you can put up your hands for any questions or anything like that, or to say good morning or anything like that, feel free. Um, but we'll use the hand box signal and the chat box maybe uh, initially. Hi, good morning. Nice to see good, you. Good morning, good morning. Who is this? Uh, my name is Tom Pitt, student of Omnia. Okay, excellent. You're very, very welcome. All right, so thank you for joining. Okay, and uh, uh, you're in uh, Omnia? Omnia, yes. In Omnia, okay. Sweden. yeah. And uh, how has that been for you? Uh, well, uh, I'm quite excited to, to be the part of uh, cooking for the future. And uh, e excited to see a uh, new knowledge coming. And yeah, we will. Nice to see you. Excellent, yeah. excellent. Thank you very much. And nice to see you all here as well. Yeah. So that, that that's brilliant. And you're welcome. Good morning, Margit. Is it Margit? Good morning. Thank you. Good morning. Yes, it is Margit. Margit. Okay, I have it pronounced right. So yes. my apologies if my pronunciation is poor. No problem. Your pronunciation is not fine. Okay. Thank you very, very much. And you're based where, Margit? I'm from Estonia. Okay. I'm their English Excellent. teacher. Their English teacher, just to help them if necessary. That's fantastic, Margit. That's brilliant. Um, so you're down in Tartu. It's a yes. it's, yeah. It's it, it's a pity we didn't get a chance to get over there. I haven't been to Estonia, so I was looking forward to that trip, but unfortunately, obviously, that changed over the year. Now let's hope you can visit us next time. Estonia is really beautiful. So I hear. So I hear. Yes. So that 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 would be good. Good morning. Uh, good morning. Um, Buenaventura, Aileen. Is that Aileen? Uh, yeah. Say good morning. Yes, uh, hello. You're very welcome. Yeah. Hello, good morning. Good morning, good morning. Who have we there saying good morning as well? Uh, George here from Bamiya. George, brilliant. Great to have you in, George. Thank you. Good morning to you too. So you're Omni as well, George, is this? Uh, from Vamia. Vamia, sorry, Vamia. So that's in Western Finland near the Swedish border. Okay, we'll just give it two more minutes, guys, just to make sure that everyone's connected up and then we can start. So uh, what we might do so just to begin with, if you want to start and uh, just quickly introduce yourself to me and um, we'll proceed from there. Um, where will we start? Who will we start with? So if we just start with, uh, so we have, you know, okay, we'll just start with, um, 
Mary, is it? We'll start with you, Mary. So if you just want to put on your mic and just um, introduce yourself quickly and uh, where, where you're based, and we'll start from there. Okay, can everyone see? Sorry, I put on my camera. So, can everyone hear me okay? Yes, I can hear you. Yes. 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 Okay, that's brilliant. Fantastic. Um, so, if you just want to. Start quickly yourself. So, Mary, we might start with you if you want to just introduce yourself quickly and where you're from. Hey. Good morning. Hey, good morning. This is Mary, and I am a second year student from Vamia. That's fantastic. Brilliant. You're very, very welcome. Um, next, we have is. Um, who do we have next? We have uh, Argo. Argo. Yes. Hello. My name is Argo. I'm from Estonia. I'm a second year student here. I like to cook and stuff. And yeah, thank you. Okay, you're very welcome. Um, next we have is Markus. Yes, hello. I'm a culinary teacher in uh, Tartu. That's in Estonia. Yeah, that's about it. Sorry, I recognize the name now, Marcus. Yeah. All right, so you're, you're welcome. Thank you for joining. Um, Aileen? Hello, good morning. Good morning. Uh, I'm Aileen from Vamia, international cook student here in Vaasa, Finland. Okay, you're very welcome. Excellent. And we have uh, Trin. Trin. Do you hear me? Yes, I can indeed. Hi, my name is Trin. I'm also uh, from Estonia. I don't know what to say anymore. <laughs> That's fine. No problem. You're very welcome. Um, we have um, uh, Sumpit. Is it Sumpit? Yes. Hi. Good morning, everyone, and nice to hear, uh, nice to see you all from here. And I'm excited to be for this session. We'll see. I'm Excellent. excited. Yeah. You're very welcome. Um, Carmen. So we have Carmen. Okay, so we we'll move on. We have uh, Jana. Jana. Well, I'm a chef teacher from Finland. Nice to see, meet you again. <laughs> just listen, just listen, listening to your uh, workshop with, with Zombit here. Okay, excellent, yeah. excellent. You're welcome. And we have Kristen. Hi, I'm Kristen and I'm from uh, for Estonia. Excellent. You're very, very welcome. And George? Hello, I'm George from... Uh... George just got cut out there slightly. And I'm trying to move on to the screen here, let's put... So uh, sorry, no. Uh, so we have uh, we went down as far as George, and um, we've um, who else have we got here? We have uh, Kertu. Kertu is it? Or Cinema? And we have Maidu. Yes, hello. I'm uh, from Tampa. 
you're very, very welcome. And we also have uh, Yana, and we have Una, is it welcome, Una? We have Sirli. Okay, so I think that's everybody. All right, so you're very, very welcome today. And today we're going to be discussing um, sustainable gastronomy. So you would have seen some of the stuff up on um, the website. And there was some, um, you know, the, the, there's lots of different uh, video clips and notes and some lectures up there and uh, stuff for yourselves. And really what that is for is that you can dip in and out of it. All right, because when we talk about sustainable gastronomy, some of, um, you know, it, it's a more broader topic that we're talking about. And it's broad in the sense that it's variable and various dependent on where you are in the world, uh, particularly with regards to when we're talking about um, locality and sustainability and uh, provenance of food, etc. So that's all dependent on where you are inside in the world. But some of the main items within it, particularly to do with climate change, environmental indicators, etc., well, they go across all borders. So the climate doesn't recognize borders. OK, so and it's important that we as cooks and particularly as we're starting off as cooks, understand the long term effects of what we do in our industry and how we go about purchasing our food, preparing our food, that we're conscious of our environmental surroundings, um, that we're conscious of food waste, which is the real big one out there. Um, some of the, again, it's big news here in Ireland at the moment, um, where they've uh, discovered that food waste accounts for about 25% of all greenhouse gases in its current form format. So food waste count, accounts for more greenhouse gas emissions than all the airplanes put together inside the world. All right, yet we hear about the airplanes all the time, but we don't sometimes hear about the food waste element. So there are things that we can actually do ourselves to sort of help and sustain both our careers and our jobs into the future and have good lives. Hopefully everyone will have a good life and, uh, and a good career but also help sustain the planet. And that's kind of the crucial thing, because if the planet is unhealthy, it produces unhealthy food. And then if it produces unhealthy food, that means we're consuming unhealthy food. So that doesn't help us having a good, long, healthy life. OK, or preparing good, wholesome, healthy food. All right, or healthier food. Um, and that's really, really important. For us to be aware of that and very very important for young chefs starting their career wherever you may end up in the food industry that's really really important to understand that so we've got some things that we will go through today um, to discuss that and to talk about it and um, we also then have some uh, worksheets that i will talk to you about what i will do is that we will take a uh, lunch break uh, here in Ireland. It's only um, 13 minutes past nine in the morning, so I won't be taking lunch break. But I understand that um, you're two out. Most of you are two hours um, ahead. So at half past ten Irish time, which should be 12:30 Estonian and Finnish time, and that will be 11:30 Basque time. Um, we will take a break for 30 minutes for lunch. And we'll come back then after and we'll look at part two of the whole lecture series. So initially, we're going to go through the lecture that I've prepared for you. Feel free at any stage to put up your hand and ask a question. Don't be afraid to ask a question. If I can answer it for you straight away, I will answer it for you straight away. If I cannot answer it for you straight away, what I will do inside of the chat box before I finish is I'm going to put in my email address for work and that you can follow up with me via email. And for anything else that you want to inquire about to regard to sustainability, food sustainability, please absolutely feel free to email me. And that's really, really important because 
the connections that you make here now and the networks that you build up here now can help you later on in your careers. And it also helps with other people and sharing the message of sustainability amongst ourselves initially and then spreading the message wider to our own communities and our own networks that we may have. And that's really, really important, particularly in the age of social media. We have the opportunity to get messages out really rapidly, really quickly and to a large audience. And particularly if they're the right messages and they're for the, um, the better good of what we're trying to do in the long term. So I'm just going to try and share the screen now that I have with you and we will begin. So I hope everyone can see the screen. Can everyone see that screen? Yeah, I can see. Yeah, everybody can see the screen. That's brilliant. All right. So, um, and we'll um, we'll just begin, as the man says. So, if we, um, you're again, like I said, you're you're very welcome. All right. So. Um, cooking for the Future with an amazing project, um, concepts, um, the design behind us, um, the whole idea behind us and the organization of it was a fantastic uh, concept and to see it actually in fruition and to be here in front of you talking to you, um, it's excellent to look at it. So it's a great resource for yourselves also that you can go back and use this resource and continue to use this resource and hopefully uh, into the future, it will be updated and new stuff can be put up there, etc. So that's really, really good for yourselves that you've some place that you can check uh, for information. So um, overall, the project is an excellent idea and it's really, really good to have such a wide variety of people involved in it um, from all backgrounds, all walks of life um, and uh, many, many nationalities, which is excellent. All right. So like I said, we're going to look at sustainable gastronomy today and what we mean by sustainable gastronomy. Now, um, being Irish, okay, and even though we um, even though we speak English as kind of our first language, it's slightly different from some English that you might be used to. So if I talk really, really fast, which is a habit that we have here in Ireland, we talk very fast, um, please just tell me to slow down. I won't be offended at all. So you can ask me to slow down uh, just to be a bit clearer. Um, and that's really, really important that you understand that, that you can ask that. So I, I wouldn't be offended. All right. Sorry, um, TJ. You have, oh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Hi, yeah. Hi, hi, Morris. How's it going? Hi, TJ. You're welcome. How are Thanks you doing? Thanks a million. Listen to me. I don't know if anybody else is having this, but are, are you sharing a presentation now or a screen? Yes. Yeah, I can see it. I can just see you, but that could be just me. But just to check in with others, because I can't see what you're sharing. I can just see you. I can see. Okay, okay, sorry. Um, let me no, but that's just me. That. Yeah, but everyone else might be okay. It might be just me. Yeah, I'm seeing the presentation. Okay, sorry, that's fine. I can it's see sorry. Marcus now. I can see Marcus, but maybe it's just just something that I'm encountering then. But, okay, uh, TJ. Yeah. Okay, yeah, no yeah. bother. Well, Thanks. Hopefully that might change. All right. No bother. So, Thanks, man. Thanks. No bother. No bother. Sorry, now. So where's my screen gone? Oh, I have to go back to the screen again. Sorry, guys. Just uh, one second. Okay, so we're here we're sharing again. So what do we th uh, what are we going to look at when we talk about sustainable gastronomy? Well, we're looking at climate changes. Like that's a um, major issue out there. It's going to be an issue going forward. Um, it's certainly going to be an issue for the next couple of hundred years. So that includes your whole career. Um, and we have to kind of understand what we mean by climate changes. There's a lot of information out there on it. It can be very, very overwhelming sometimes um, because it's much bigger than us individually. So that can be difficult to uh, comprehend and to um, assess um, ourselves, as the man says. Um, but like it's an important issue that we must try and understand um, and as best as possible understand it and uh, to get our heads around it and so that we can um, do something about it. We're going to be looking at environmental indicators. So what are the indicators 
that tell us about the environment or about what we're doing and how we're doing it, um, what the benchmarks out are and what is best practice. And that's really important that we understand that as well. We're going to be discussing food waste, which is a really big interest area for myself in particular. Um, it's something that I've always been very, very conscious of in my 30 years as a chef and uh, working with food. And uh, it's something I think we can do a lot more about. And it's not just about where we dump the waste. It's about how we're preparing food, how we're working with food. And uh, maybe there's things that we can use that we're dumping in the bin often. Um, so little things like that. We're talk talking talk about healthy food choices and what we mean when we talk about healthy food choices. Now, all food is healthy because you have to eat to survive. But we can have some foods that are definitely healthier than others. Uh, we can have some diets that are shown, have been shown to um, be healthier than other diets. In particular, you've got, and you'll be moving on to this in the next lecture, plant-based diets in particular. Uh, and that's a growing area. And uh, it will grow even further, I think, about in Ireland in particular. And uh, just we'll talk about in Ireland, but it's a reflection of Europe or wider Europe. About one in 10 people um, are exclusively plant-based in their diet at the moment, all right? Approximately one in 10 people, and that will increase, and it has been increasing for the past 20 years, um, and they do predict by 2050, it, that could be up to three in 10 people on exclusively plant-based diets, all right? So we're gonna just speak about that a little bit, and then we're gonna look at organic foods and organic farm labeling, and what we mean by organic foods and you know how we can incorporate those into our menus, into our dishes that we're designing, um, how we can uh, understand about where our food comes from and how farmers create our food for us. Uh, and that's really important that we understand that as chefs as well. The food doesn't just magically appear in the back of the bus or the back of the van and gets delivered. You know, it's you know, created, somebody creates it, they sow it, they harvest it, um, they prepare it for us for it to come to us. So again, it's good to understand that process as well and really important from a cook's perspective to understand exactly where our food comes from. So that's important. So we talk about climate change and according to the Institute of International European Affairs, Climate change can be defined as a change in global or regional climate patterns attributed largely to an increased levels of atmospheric carbon dioxide produced by the use of fossil fuels. So if we wanted to just define it and put it in one really specific definition, that is what we mean by climate change. It's a bit broader than that. It can be more complex, but for our purposes, that's absolutely fine. We don't need it to be much more complex than that. OK, so then, and that, that's really, really important. Um, and if you look at the table that I have there, and again, there's a lot of people out there that are doubting climate change or they're, they're not sure that um, climate change is a real thing, etc. Well, the actual evidence shows us that climate change is real and temperature increase is actual, actually real. All right, and if we look at the graph here, this is sort of, based over 140 years, we can see that the temperature has increased by nearly one full degree Celsius. And that's important because if the temperature of the um, planet increases, both land and ocean, but in particular the ocean, that has a knock on effect. If that increases, increases above 2.5 degrees Celsius on average over a year, Ireland, which is a lovely green country with lots of rain and, you know, we don't have many temperature fluctuations. We produce really, really good food based on it and stuff like that. Well, we'd actually turn into a more Mediterranean climate and with more issues of drought. And that's just by 2.5 degrees Celsius on average. So it's a really important area that we need to understand and what we can do um, as cooks, as individuals, because sometimes we think as individuals we can do nothing. But as individuals, what we can do to help offset climate change and maybe stabilize us a small bit more by the little simple things that we do in our jobs, in our lives, in our careers. If we talk about 
environmental indicators, and this is really important to um, kind of have an idea of where we need to get our benchmarks. But according to the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, an environmental indicator can be defined as an environment indicator is a numerical value that helps provide insight to the state of the environment and our human health. So the key thing there is that they're interconnected. The environment and human health are interconnected together. One, like human health in particular, is reliant on a good quality environment. Okay, and the environment itself absolutely can benefit human health if it's managed properly and if we take care of it properly and it can look after us properly. Um, so again, people maybe sometimes, it, it's very, very broad, so people kind of move, run away from it and they don't think about it in the terms of like they're not affecting it, but we're all affecting it in our own little way. But that means if we're all affecting it, we can all do something about it as well. So. The five key environmental indicators are biological diversity. So again, this is about biological diversity, and that means a variety. All right. So um, a lot of the rainforests of the Amazon are being cut down, uh, basically to plant um, soya. Okay. So our palm, sorry, palm trees um, for palm oil. Okay. Now. The problem with that is, is that when you're getting to high percentages of that, the biodiversity is gone. The reason that it's such a, a biodiverse region is its position on the planet, obviously, it's a thing. But it's also, that's part of Mother Nature. That's what Mother Nature does. Uh, she makes it diverse. And uh, it's done for a reason, because everything then supports everything else. And the problem with uh, having just one crop or concentrating on one item, um, that reduces the biodiversity within the region. And therefore, and that doesn't help the environment overall. So that has a knock on effect then on human health. And um, food production, so how we produce our food. And that's a really, really important one because, again, when we're inside in our kitchens and we're just concentrating on our kitchens. Sometimes we um, we don't um, think about where our food comes from. All right, so um, that's you know uh, uh, something that we really need to pay more attention to, and especially as um, young chefs and uh, young young cooks in particular, is that where does our food come from? All right, how does it get here? How is it produced? Um, really, really important stuff. Um, and then we're going to look at the average global surface temperature and CO2 concentrations in the atmosphere. And the CO2 concentrations we know as a carbon footprint. And uh, we're conscious of that because CO2 heats up the planet. And like we said, if we change it just by even another degree and a half in the next 100 years, we fundamentally change the uh, planet and uh, the climate of the planet and that affects what we can grow what we can produce that all that then has a knock-on effect and affects human health because there's certain regions become um deserts basically for food production that are currently quite good at food production so it's really important that we understand what we mean by a carbon and we'll talk about carbon footprints further um but what we mean by co2 emissions it can be very distant from us uh, when we're not um, paying attention to it um, because again we just see it on the news or we see it in the papers and it sounds bad uh, but what does it actually mean and that builds back to about buying food sort of thinking about your menu choices your dishes what you're eating what's available locally to you what's available around you uh, maybe look at that first it doesn't mean that you can't have a kiwi again or you can't have a banana um, I certainly know Estonia um, Finland, Ireland, and as far as I'm aware, Basque country, we don't grow bananas, all right? So we don't have the climate to grow bananas. Um, it doesn't mean that we can't have a banana again, but what, it, what we can do is actually look at what we have on our doorstep first and then move our circle wider and wider and wider when we're looking to purchase food, all right? So that's why that's important to lower the surface temperature and uh, how it links back in to um, 
how we produce our food and how we prepare food. Uh, we also think about human population, and that's really, really important because the population of the planet has exploded since the basically the Industrial Revolution, so since about 1850, and it's gone up exponentially. Um, right up until the 1940s, 1950s, it was a steady rise. But since the 1960s, we have added over four and a half billion people to the planet, or nearly five billion people to the planet. And by the time 2050 arrives, which is going to be year lifetime, um, and by the time 2050 arrives, we will have nearly 10 billion people on the planet. Now that's 10 billion human beings. So how do we feed them? How do we care for everybody? How do we look after everybody? How do we try to ensure that everybody has a fair go? Um, particularly as a, we talk about food. And that's important for us because if we lose that sense of our humanity and our fellow man sense, even as cooks in the kitchen, well then we're moving away from what you know, the whole idea of life is all about and uh, having a good life and a long life and a healthy life. And also then we just concentrate on cooking and we don't take any wider aspects of it, uh, which is fine. I mean, if that's individuals do that, but for the greater good, it probably isn't fine. And then we have resource depletion. And that's what we hear an awful lot about with regard to fossil fuels and fossil fuel usage, but not just that. Deforestation is a big issue and not just in the Amazon rainforest, also in northern latitudes. Um, it's a really, really big issue. Um, the clearing of forests uh, for farming use. Now, you know, that's difficult being from Ireland to um, give out about any about that because we, we have ended up being really excellent dairy producers and beef producers in this country. We have stable temperatures, we have green grass, it's renewable, it's recyclable, we, you know, it's natural to a lot of us here, but um, 100 years ago, or just over 100 years ago, Ireland was one of the most forested countries in Europe. Today, Ireland is the least forested country in Europe. So we're bottom of the table for forestry. And again, that goes back to biological diversity. So if everything is just a meadow, well, then there's only so much can be done with the meadow. OK, so it's all interconnected and it's all interlinked. And that's why looking at these indicators, not every day, you don't have to wake up in the morning and check all these indicators straight away. But every now and again, check in with them and see what's happening and see what you can do as an individual in your kitchen. Um, and even when we're just starting our careers, we can, you know, have subtle changes that we can imply or things that we can imply to try and help offset these issues that are out there and that's important for us and important for a good uh, long career as well that we, we want to be successful inside the macro